Can ChatGBT turn scratch projects into real Python code? In this video, I took screenshots of my old scratch games, fed them into ChatGBT, and let it convert into Python. And the results were kind of brilliant, but also very, very wonky. So for anyone who doesn't remember, or is successfully repressed, Scratch is that drag and drop programming tool with those colorful puzzle piece blocks. It's how a ton of people wrote their first line of code without actually typing any code. So here's the idea. I'll take a screenshot of a Scratch script, feed it into ChatGPT, and ask it to translate it into Python code. No edits, no hints, just pure AI magic. And then I'll copy whatever code it gives me, dump it straight into Python, and see if it actually works. And that's the entire challenge. Screenshot, ChatGPT, copy, and run. I'm doing this partly for fun and partly to see if AI can actually help beginners learn by translating visual code into real syntax. So how smart is ChatGBT really? Can we figure out what a sprite is doing by just looking? Let's take a look. All right, first up, we got this simple movement script. This is what you'd expect to see in any starter project. You know, when you're beginning to code in Scratch, this is usually the first thing you make. It's actually the first thing I posted on my channel too. What this does is it makes a Scratch cat move 10 steps, rotate, move 10 steps, rotate, and then stop with a few weights in between just so you can see the movement. Now let's go ahead and take a screenshot of this and plug it into GBT and see what happens. I'm just gonna tell GBT to turn it into Python code and also visualize it with Pygame or else we won't be able to see anything. And let's see what it gives me. Here's a Python version of the scratch code using Pygame, yada, yada, yada. Code looks pretty promising at first. It's initializing the Pygame. Uh, it's a little long, but you'd expect that because it has to build the whole visualization framework. And looking good, it even left some comments on what it's doing. Wow, turn 90 degrees clockwise, keep the window open. Seems pretty logical to me on first glance, but you know, we don't know until we try it, right? So let's copy this and paste it into our Python IDE and see what happens. Okay, pasting it in here and we got it good to go. So let's just run this thing and see what happens. Nothing happened. Where's the window? I don't even see a Pi game window. Oh, here it is. Kind of a disappointment. I'd expect uh, GBT to actually get this simple visualization working, but this is not a good sign. It already failed the first challenge, but I mean, at least I see the end result. Like I can see the, the ball facing downward, but I can't see the process at all. I think ChatGBT forgot to update the display every time it moved the circle. So it was only showing the display at the end in that while loop. Let's see if we can fix that real quick. All that's missing is updating the screen every time we move our circle. So if we insert a display update in between each of those steps, we should be able to see the full process. With that fixed, let's run it and see what happens. Yes. Now we can actually see the ball move and rotate on the screen. How wonderful. Let's be honest though, ChatGPT seriously messed up on this one. It wasn't able to render it correctly, but at least it showed something on the screen. So for that reason, I'm gonna give it a partial verdict. Next up to the challenge, we got a classic arcade game. Compared to the previous project, this Pong project involves a lot more sprites, a lot more blocks, and a lot more tricky operations. First of all, you'll notice that we have two paddles and a ball. The paddles are controlled by the arrow keys, which might be a little tricky for ChatGPT already, but combined with the fact that the ball also has to bounce along the walls, that might pose a pretty big challenge. Let's see if we can do it. So here's a screenshot of the first paddle, and I'm just gonna screenshot all three sprites and the code inside it, just to give ChatGPT a little more reference so it knows what it's doing or else it'll get lost. All right, with all three of these screenshots in, we can ask it to convert these scratch blocks into Python code and also specify that it's uh, Pygame so we can actually visualize the game and not just give us some print statements. And let's see, so here's the Python equivalent of your scratch Pong game using Pygame. Dang, it even gives us instructions on how to install the library and gives us a full Python code. I've noticed that ChatGPT comments its code really well. 
So that's a plus. It's easy to debug and easy to see what it's doing. And it even gives us the game controls and asks us if it wants to uh, add more stuff. But I think this is good for now. So let's copy that and paste it into our IDE. All right, here we go. Let's get that control V action going. And I love how it's always so satisfying to see the different colors on the IDE because it looks like a rainbow to me. No underlines or anything, so I think we can go ahead and run it and see what happens. Wow, okay. So we got a full visualization of this Pong game and somehow it runs smoother than the Scratch version probably because Python is a little more powerful, but damn, this is, this is flawless. Like the ball bounces off the walls, paddles are catching it correctly. The response time is crazy. I use uh, W and S to control the left one and up and down to control the right one. So it even got the controls correct. I would say this is this is solid like this embodies the original spirit of the arcade game and is a perfect if not better replica of the scratch project that I plugged in. GBT really nailed this one so we gotta hand down the verdict of accurate. Let's see if we can make it a bit more challenging. Beyond just games I wanted to see if ChatGPT could deal with other types of projects, like physics simulations. So my mind eventually went back to this pendulum project I made around two years ago that shows a bob swinging around an anchor using some simple trigonometry and math. Although it's not overly complex for a physics simulation, I think it's still complex enough to give ChatGPT a little bit of a hard time and throw it a curveball, trip it up a little bit with a lot of those variables and formulas. Let's go ahead and take a screenshot, plug it in, and see how it does. Okay, let's look at the code. So it's got the parameters. Okay, I see start angle, anchor X, anchor Y. At the bottom, we also got the rendering and then it explains how it works. On first glance, looks pretty accurate to me, but don't know until we try. So let's copy it and paste it into the IDE to see what happens. Three, two, one, go. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of that terminal there too. And damn, okay. I guess don't judge a book by its cover really applies here because that is not how a pendulum swings. I, I'm pretty sure gravity doesn't work sideways like that. And it's also swinging really, really fast. So let's try to see what went wrong here. Okay, two things I see immediately is first of all, that star angle should not be 90 degrees. Uh, that's why it's swinging sideways. And also, I don't know why, but ChatGPT multiplied the time inside math.sign by 100 which was making our pendulum swing obscenely fast. I'm gonna fix that first and yeah, what do you know? The pendulum slowed down, that's crazy. Okay, with that fixed, let's go ahead and go up and fix our start angle too. And with that, our project should look exactly like our scratch version. GBT managed to make the oscillations, yes. It managed to make the rope, managed to make the visuals, but it couldn't quite get to the finish line on its own, I had to step in. So for that reason, we got to hand down a partial verdict here. I'm sorry, ChatGBT, you failed. For our pen ultimate challenge, we got a classic on this channel, another physics simulation, but a lot more tricky in terms of both variables and math. Let's see how ChatGBT does on this one. Given that lackluster performance in the pendulum project, I'm not sure if it even stands a chance in this one but might as well give it an opportunity to prove its worth and correct its 1-2 record. Anyways, for this lineup, we got ChatGBT going up against my three-body orbital simulation project that I made a few months back. It's got like 10 times more variables, a lot more complex physics logic, and overall, it's a lot more dense in structure compared to the Pendulum one. All right, let's go ahead and take a screenshot of all this code and see how AI performs on this one. Generating, 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 okay. Sure, exclamation mark. The scratch code shown in your screenshot is implementing 
uh, gravitational. Okay, I'm scroll down. Class body. Create stars and planets. It put it in a list. Okay, that looks actually pretty, pretty solid. While running, drawing the stars, doing all of that. Key details mapped from scratch to Python. Mass, gravity, mass, and G. Oh, damn. Okay. All right, maybe I was wrong. Maybe GBT actually got this one in the bag, but I'm not so sure until we test. Okay, yeah, no, I, I was wrong. I was wrong. ChatGBT, please forgive me for underestimating your ability because that is honestly the most beautiful three-body simulation I've ever seen, even though Earth just got flung into oblivion. That is actually impressive though. I wasn't expecting ChatGPT to actually be able to do that, let alone get the background right by generating randomly dotted stars all over the canvas. So I think I just got mogged by ChatGPT. That is, that is not a good look. Let's take a look at this one more time. Yeah, no, that, that, is, that is accurate. That is more accurate than my simulation. So ChatGPT, you won this one. I'm gonna have to give you an accurate verdict because this is unparalleled. This is this is like perfection. I don't even know what to say. For the final project of this video, we got GBT playing football. Well, not quite playing football, but it's certainly decoding football. GBT is going up against this mini football project or game, should I say, that has a grand total of nine sprites nine sprites, complete with the whole music soundtrack. I don't know how it's gonna do this. Um, I'm actually, I didn't design this one to be solvable by ChatGBT, but I just really wanna see what it'll do in this situation. So let's go take a look. I am very excited to see what ChatGBT has to say. Okay, screenshot one, account type, balance options visible, <laughs> transfer bill check, yo, wait, 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 <laughs> it thinks I uploaded some bank statements or something, <laughs> amount debted, that the commas aren't even in the right place, first of all, and I didn't know I was, I didn't know I had that much money. Be honest thank you chatgbt for telling me that i'll give it a second chance by clarifying that i need python code and not some bank statements so okay so now it's giving me instructions on how to do each sprite yeah no nah, i'm just gonna count this as a fail because it's gonna go into the whole rabbit hole of do you want to continue and doing all that stuff so yeah this is a this is a total failure wasn't expecting much anyways So to recap, we went through five different scratch projects from easy difficulty to extreme difficulty, fed it into ChatGPT and tested the Python code that it gave us. Out of these five, we had two successes, two partials, and one total failure. So can ChatGPT turn scratch projects into Python? Sort of. It crushes the simple stuff like movements, loops, and basic logic. But once you get into clones, timing, or anything specific and niche, it starts to fall apart. And honestly, that makes sense. Scratch isn't just code, it's also layout, sprite behavior, timing, and translating that from a flat image is like trying to cook a recipe from a photo of someone holding a spoon. My guess is that GBT isn't directly converting the Scratch code into Python. It's interpreting the Scratch code first, extracting the project meaning, and then using that information to formulate the Python code. It works so well for Pong and 3Body because those are common things people code in general, and it's trained on that type of data. While moving the Scratch Cat and the mini football game are so specific that GBT doesn't really know how to do that because it's never seen it before. Still though, I'm pretty impressed. And if you're learning to code, this might actually be a fun way to bridge the gap from Scratch to Python, especially if you're trying to debug or ask specific programming questions and not convert entire projects. Anyways, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed, please like, comment, and subscribe. And hey, if this video helped you relive your Scratch era, you owe me one. Bye.